Welcome to the inaugural Canyons News Podcast. I'm your producer, Eli Kern. Your hosts for today are Xander Grable and Sam Rabadi, and the topic is COC football, specifically starting quarterback Emery Floyd. Sam and I had the opportunity to interview Emery and learn more about who he is as a player and more importantly, as a person. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave you with today's hosts. Enjoy. We're setting off with you. Having, you, you got to interview Emery. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't there for the interview. So I'm basically kind of like the, the audience in this aspect of learning, learning along with you guys. And uh, so what are your initial thoughts about Emery? Yeah, so like you said, I got a chance to sit down with Emery today. Um, we just talked about his life, his goals, um, the f- on on the football field, off the football field, how he is as a person. Um, and I think once we kind of, because what we're going to do here is we're going to play clips of his interviews, of his interview, um, answering my questions. And I and what I hope the audience gains is a better insight as to who Emery Floyd is. Um, but just kind of off the bat, I think you guys can expect to hear someone that's humble, um, someone that's gracious, um, but also someone that has big aspirations and dreams. Um, he's never given up on those dreams, as we mentioned earlier. Um, he, this is someone that lived and was born and raised in Tampa, Florida, and moved all the way across the country. That's, that's a pretty serious thing to do um, in order to follow your, follow your dreams so um, it's no surprise that he's hardworking and, you know, he has a great work ethic. Um, and his personality really shines through. So I was definitely excited before I was going to interview Emery. I, I was excited during the interview, and I'm, um, I'm even more excited to share his, um, his life story in his own words. And, and I, I really hope you guys can enjoy it. Um, there is one thing I want you to keep in mind when you kind of listen to this next um, clip, because we're going to start going into the clips now, um, is there are no JUCO um, community college to go play community college at, um, in Florida. So he had to come to California, and like we mentioned, he got that through a connection. But but that's kind of an interesting um, nugget there that you, there are no community colleges in Florida. So um, let's go ahead and move into the first uh Soundbite here with Emory Floyd. Yep, let's do it. College of the Canyons quarterback. Uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but God's plan brought me to California. Um, I wasn't highly recruited out of high school. Uh, and my high school coach had a connection over here at uh, Antelope Valley College. And that's how I came to Cali. And then we played against COC our first game of the season. And after I seen the way that they run their program and how their offense is, I just just felt like this was the place to be. And it more definitely is. I mean, I think that's it's pretty commendable, like packing up everything and moving out here to follow your dreams. I, I can kind of relate to that. I'm, I'm from Oklahoma and I moved out here for acting. And I, I can tell you firsthand, it's a huge, huge colder shock and change. So that's de- definitely commendable. Um, from him so yeah what are your thoughts on that yeah I think he's I think he's fascinating I think he's I think he just wants to succeed um, so badly and I I really think that clip is cool because he talks about like the first game being against College of the Canyons and him noticing right away the culture and I think in order to um, identify something that quickly I feel like it's got to be in you personally I feel like you have to kind of have that sense of what you're looking for in order to be able to identify it once you're able to see it. So he was able to see that in College of the Canyons. I don't want to give away too much, but he he does talk about um, he does transfer to College of the Canyons. And, um, you know, the first year he'll talk about the first year, it was a little bit um, a little bit rough. But um, in terms of he was he kind of had to red shirt. Um, but he gets more into that and, and it's just, it goes to, it's a testament to his character that, um, he's been able to overcome so much early on in, in his career. Um, and so here's a little bit more, um, from Emory Floyd. So, um, I was fortunate enough to get in contact with one of the coaches over here uh, at the end of the season. 
And uh, not to say that he buttered me up, but the way that they were talking and just the overall aroma that I was just getting from the conversations just made me realize that this was the place to be. And ultimately, I just prayed on it. I'm very religious, uh, believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So just asked him to show me the way, and he said this was the place. So, Yeah, I definitely, I think it's, and still going back to what we were talking about earlier, that it was like a huge feat for him to come over here and chase his dreams, willing to chase his dreams um, to go that far, and even coming over to COC and um, redshirting that first year and, like, not being able to play. He's making those sacrifices to, um, you know, chase his dreams. Yeah, he comes off as a guy that just kind of has the bigger picture in mind. Um, he, he, he kind of looks at the scenario and – even though he may not necessarily see the the light at the end of the end of the tunnel or like the reasoning behind the coach's um, you know decision decision to redshirt him, he believes in the process. He believes in himself. He believes in his talents, and he and he just has that will to overcome whatever um, is in front of him. Um, whether you know that's coming all the way across the state to California, you know moving. Um, you know, co colleges going from the Antelope Community College to College of the Canyon, sitting out. Um, and for me personally, you're right. You think like, hey, star quarterback, College of the Canyons. Wow, like he, you know, he must have, he must be he must this. Must have it all. Yeah, he, must he, have he it must all. Have it all. Yeah. But you can tell he's someone that's kind of gone through a journey, and he's just so humble about it, and and down to earth, and. Um, I, I just I just think that's really cool because you don't really get that sometimes from from athletes. Mm, definitely, like linking back to that um, the first clip, he was saying that he wasn't very highly recruited, and you know he he knew what he wants to do and he wants to go chase that dream and you know good for him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Him. You know he and and look, some players might get discouraged by that rating and say, you know what, maybe football isn't for me. But not Emery. He looks at that and he. I, I think getting the sense from talking to him, I think he, he looks at that rating and he says, you know what, I'm going to prove those people wrong. I believe in myself. I know what I'm supposed to do in life. And he believes that, um, uh, you know, playing football, that's his calling. That's that's what he wants to do. Um, so I think that's I think that's great. Um, but let's go ahead and let's get a little bit more into the into his uh, answers to some of these questions. Uh, I honestly can say that I didn't see the vision at first, but I honestly love Coach I, uh, Coach Corbett, and Coach O for making me uh, take that step back in redshirting because now it's uh, opened my eyes and, and I've got to see the game from a different point of view. I've gotten to grow up a little bit more and mature a little bit more. So um, after that redshirt year, uh, I felt like this year was going to be a special one, and uh, I just got to continue to uphold that standard and be able to play to that gold cougar standard. So that's just one thing that I can say that that red shirt year has really helped me with. So I was really just uh, coming to practice each and every day, coming to the workouts and just learning from, from the guys that were playing above me. Um, and just taking that step back and just coming to practice, seeing their thought process, asking them this, asking them that, and just letting, um, letting that red shirt year really just be a learning year, to be honest. And uh, I think that's really helped me evolve my game, just seeing the game from a, a different point of view and being able to see others play and, and go off of what others think and just see just see things from a different point of view. But during that redshirt year, it, it was hard, but it was a grind. Uh, coming to practice every day, knowing that you're not going to suit up on Saturday nights and uh, going in that locker room, just seeing everybody else suit up, but you can't. So it, it was hard for a while, but looking back on it, I'm, I'm definitely glad that I was able to take that step back during that shirt year so uh, it was it was a dark time for a while um you know whenever you don't play and and I feel like that I have the ability to be on that field it it kind of hits your your ego and your confidence so so I was I was in a place for a little while but um like I mentioned earlier uh, I just always go up to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that's one man that I can just always go up to and I know he's never going to judge me and I know he's always going to be there for me so just taking the time out each and every day and just praying and praying and praying and just knowing that he has a plan for me and, and that it too shall come to pass. So 
that's just one thing that really helped me stay focused and stay determined, which is prayer, prayer. That's all I can say. All right, so I, I think his responses to those questions were great. I mean, he stayed true to himself during that year, and he said it was a dark time for him, but he used that time instead of just, like, falling back, be like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this. Why, am I, why did I go all the way across the country and just to sit out for this year? But he didn't do that. He went and he learned from other players. He, he, he was like a sponge. He soaked up all the information, and now he's using this year to, you know, disperse all that information that he's gathered from his year of just sitting out and on the sidelines and, like he said, not suiting up. Yeah, again, you know, he talks a lot about um, his religion, um, and it seems like that's what he falls back on um, to kind of gain insight, um, to keep focused, to keep driven on on the goal uh, at hand. Um, you know, I look at it, and, and I was thinking to myself when I heard him say, you know, they were uh, watching, watching everyone kind of suit up, and I can't suit up. I'm just thinking to myself, imagine going to work every day, you work hard, you st- you know, you do what you're supposed to do. But when the time comes for, for your project to, you know, for your project to, to reach the final stages or, or get shown off, it can't because um, there's a rule, right? You're, you're red shirted. You, you can't showcase what, what you learned or who you are. Um, and I think that must have been really difficult. Yeah. I mean, what do you like, what do you kind of make of that? His I, difficulty like there. I said earlier, he was like a sponge during that year and just got all that information. And now he's able to like show all that information. Like he's worked hard to get to this point to be the starting quarterback for COC. And now he's able to, you know, like lead the team. Like the quarterback is pretty much the captain of the team. And now he's, everyone's graduated. He's going on. He's here. He's the guy. And I think that that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I think, and I think again, big, um, a big testament to to Emery. Uh, kind of this off season, there was a bit of a quarterback competition, but if you look at the snaps, especially from this last game, he took, he pretty much took uh, all the reps as as quarterback one. So, you know, that just goes to show that his hard work, his commitment is is paying off, and. You just can't help but root for a guy like that who who's um, gone through a journey and he just wants to succeed in life and just follow what he loves to do. So I think that's um, just really um, really cool. Yeah, you definitely want to root for the guy that's like that has that background story, and he definitely has that background story of you know sitting out for a year and watching all of his friends play and like not being able to play and sitting on the sidelines. But you know now is his time. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you know, and you know, he's thinking like, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm happy for my teammates, but man, I really want to be out there. I really want to contribute because I, I I know I can help the team." And so, um, you can kind of understand how we fell into some dark times there, and and probably question like, you know, is this is this the right path for me? Um, but you know, he stuck through it, and it seems to be paying off this year. Um, I've I've been able to I've been able to go out and watch him, um, at a game. And he just jumps off the field. His athleticism um, is... Yeah, so one of the things about when coaches kind of take over a program such as College of the Canyons, it really goes far beyond X's and O's. There's so much... Because they spend so much time with each other, um, a head coach really does kind of become a father figure. He really does... Um, instill in these athletes many of their beliefs and and kind of eth- ethics and um, just helping them grow, um, as he said, kind of grow as a man, grow as a leader. And what Emery talked about, um, helping him mature. Um, just a little bit of background about uh, you know Coach uh, Ayasenda. He actually was a standout at Hart High School. Um, so he was standout at Hart at Hart High School and then transferred. Um, to USC, um, so he's lived the he's lived the life that Emory Floyd is trying to um, is that Emory Floyd is trying to to live, and so he can really lean on uh, Coach Ayesenda for that guidance for that help. Like, hey, look, here's a man that's done what I'm trying to do. 
Um, let me ask him questions. Let me listen to him. Um, he, there's a lot that he can tell me. There's a lot that I can learn from him. Um, and I think that dynamic is so important um, between any player and, and coach to know that you can trust them, that they have their bet, your best interests at heart. Um, so I think that's really cool. And, and if you look at Coach Ayesenda, he's been the, the head coach for this is his 11th season. He's, he's been really su- successful. And they, um, he's actually a, a pretty cool story of, that we can uh, throw in here is if you guys know who Marquise Hollywood Brown is, he actually came through the College of the Canyons football program. And then he went on to Oklahoma and then um, got drafted by the Ravens. So Coach Ayesenda has that background as well of, hey, if you kind of listen to me, if you kind of are, are willing to be a sponge, I know the path forward f- to get you to where you're trying to go. Um, and I think that's, I, I think for an athlete like Emory Floyd, I think that's um, um, invaluable. Mm, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, so let's go ahead and, and we'll continue on with, with some of this uh, podcast. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. So <laughs> here we go. So this season, uh, we started off kind of rough, uh, but we were just still trying to figure each other out. You know, it's a, it's a lot of new people, a lot of young guys. Uh, it's my first time stepping on the field in a couple of years. So we were just trying to all mesh well together. But I feel like we really have something special in that, in that locker room. Uh, we just have a brotherhood like I haven't felt in a while. Um, so I just think we have something really special in store for later on in the season. And I feel like we can make a run at the state title. So that's our goal. That's our goal. I think it's just the little details each and every day, uh, just doing the right things over and over and over again. And ultimately, just, just playing our football. You know, I feel like when we play our football, play our brand of football, play COC Cougar football, I feel like nobody in the state nor country can can hang with us. So that's just me. All right. What are your thoughts on, uh, on what he said there? Yeah, you know what I find interesting is when he talks about, you know, first off, they have those lofty ambitious ambitions and, and goals, which I think every team should have. And when you're as talented as Emory Floyd, um, I think you really feel like you can um, sell your teammates on this idea of, hey, let's go out and win, you know, win his, win his championship. Um, one of the things I love that he says in that clip is Canyons football. Um What's I think there's such a perfect fit with Emory Floyd and the schematics, you know, syst- you know, the system that College of the Canyons run. Um, it's they want to run the ball and establish the run. Um, and I think that that just fits so well into Emory Floyd's um, athleticism. And not to say that he's not a yeah, an accomplished passer, because he can certainly hey, look, if you bring too many safeties down in the box, he's going to throw a bomb over your head. So you better be prepared for that. Um, But when he gets to showcase his athleticism running the ball, um, it just fits in so well with, with, um, you know, the, the other running backs and and the style that um, college of the Canyons wants to play. Yeah. He's definitely a dual threat quarterback. Like you were saying earlier. Um, I think going back to, and what he said in that last clip, of him like you feel like a brotherhood with these people like you said you're with them all the time you're practicing all the time with them and you build that sort of okay we're gonna do this because we have talent I've seen you play I know what you guys can do if we all do that the entire time we're gonna make the state championship I mean like like he he's confident in them and like you said every team has that but you know maybe because he's had a chip on his shoulder by being a red shirt freshman and he's like, he's going for it. He's going for it this year. It's, it, it, he's going, you know, 100% the entire time. His teammates are. And, you know, we'll see where this season takes him. Absolutely. And, and um, you know, Coach Aysenda has a history of producing winning teams. So um, there's just seems to be like a, such a great match between um, Coach Aysenda, the football program, and Emory Floyd. So... Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you can see that on the field, the, the chemistry that he has with his teammates and uh, with the coaching staff. Yeah, I agree. It's it's great to have chemistry on the field. Like you said, it was or like he said in the clip, 
father figure. I mean, that bond right there, quarterback and coach, is a very important bond to have. Mm -hmm. Many, even in the NFL, like Super Bowl winning teams, Andy Reid and um, Patrick Mahomes, you know, they have a bond and they like they work well together. Once you have a bond, you can work well together. And that's what happens whenever you have that brotherhood with your teammates. You work well together. Absolutely. The off the field translates, the off the field bond translates to success on the field. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, give a little more, give a listen to what else Emery had to say. I have a wonderful team around me um, from dudes on the opposite side of the ball, defense, from offense, from my old line, uh, most importantly, and from my running backs and my receivers. It's just everybody. So I really don't look at it as my job. I just feel like we all collectively just work really well together. And whenever they just put their bodies on the line for me and they go to war for me, it just makes my job so much easier. So I just can really just give my shout out to my team for that so yeah that was perfectly said I mean you can see how he enjoys like even practices he's smiling when he's talking about practices and whatnot because when you go defense versus offense and practices at the end of practices it's a competition but you're playing with your friends like you're just you're playing the game that you love with your friends and that's how you build that bond on the field and that's how you get better. You work with each other. You work against each other, and you get competitive. But at the end of the day, you're still on the same team, and you're, you know, trying to reach that certain goal. And let me add a little bit more to what Emery said there. So, my question to him was about um, leadership, and because he mentions that he gets up and he starts um, practicing at five in the morning. That's kind of like his routine. He gets up, he starts practicing at five in the morning. Um, and I asked him, Hey, you know, tell me a little bit more about your leadership. Um, and he told me that some of his, he's gotten some of his teammates to come with them at five in the morning and practice. Look, if I'm going to get up five in the morning and practice with you, we've, we're, we're, we're tight. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're definitely cool. <laughs> exactly. And, um, I believe in you as, as a leader, if I'm going to, if I'm getting up at five to, um, you know, start sweating and doing drills and, um, all that. So you, but I think that goes to show the chemistry with the team, but also he really is viewed as a leader at College of the Canyons. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that from the way his teammates respond to him, the way his teammates respect him. Um, and I just think that's really cool. Yeah. Like, like he was saying in the interview, like he puts his body on the line. He wants his teammates to put their body on the line and waking up at five in the morning and go and do a hard lift in the morning, putting your body on the line. I mean, they all have a goal in mind. They want to they wanna go to a college and they're going to want to get recognized and, you know, they're trying to reach that goal all together. And they're, they're working off of each other because, you know, one person makes another person better, another person makes another person better. And so they all want each other to be the best player they can be. Absolutely. And, and I think what, just to kind of um, add to that a bit, I think – the players around him feel if we can just carry what we're doing and be great at what we're doing, we know that Emory Floyd is gonna is gonna take us to where we're trying to go. So um, you can, yeah, I really got that sense uh, when I was talking to him. So um, so yeah, I think th I thought that was a great um, you know insight in, as to his leadership. Um, so we still got a little bit more to get through. So let's let's, do it. let's go ahead and uh, continue. But I honestly don't know what I would be doing right now without football, if I'm being completely honest. So football is plan A, and football is my life right now. Yeah, so, I mean, you can tell just by him moving across the country that football, it's a big part of his life. It's made a big impact in his life, and, you know, he, he's sticking with it. I mean, it's commendable, commendable, like what he's done. Packed up, moved across country, left his family back in Tampa, and – now he's here chasing his dream. Yeah, so Emery Floyd has two older brothers, and um, they both uh, grew up playing sports. So he got to look up to his older brothers and kind of say to himself, you know what, I want to do that. Um, I want to get into sports. And so it's really started at a young age for Emery, and, and um, you can see that. It was instilled in him at a young age that this is what I want to do, and he believes he believes in what he's trying to accomplish. 
And I just think that's it, – it's a short clip, and I think that's perfect because he doesn't really need to expand on it other than, look, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to set out mm -hmm. um, to go all out and try to be try to make it in football. Um, so I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and he set his mind to it, and it's gotten him here so far. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's roll the next clip. So my plan is to, well, God willing, uh, my plan is to transfer and uh, go to a high major Division One Power Five school and uh, hopefully get on the field there. And, and ultimately, my final goal is to get to the NFL. I believe I can do that, and I believe that I have the support system around me to be able to accomplish my dreams. So just got to put in the work. That's how I see it. Hopefully, uh, my dream school has always been Ohio State, but I recently fell in love with uh, UCLA. As you can see, I'm, I'm in some brewing gear right now. <laughs> it's just the overall, just the atmosphere of UCLA um, and Westwood. Uh, just the lights, the the campus, the just the overall aesthetic of just saying I can, I attend UCLA. So. so one thing that stood out to me in that clip is him talking about a support system. I think that's very important to have when you're going into that high tier you know, like that level of playing because there's going to be those people that are like, oh, hey, you remember me? Remember me? I'm here. Yeah, I, I support you all the way. And that's not always true. There's people that there's doubters, there's haters. And, you know, I think that he has a great goal in mind of where he wants to go. And that's his goal. And that's what he's going to do. You know? Yeah, he's definitely an, an easy guy to root for. And, and you know, um, hopefully he does succeed. And, and again, um, the College of the Canyons program really does have a track record of getting their athletes to four-year universities. So it really isn't too much of a stretch to to think that Emory Floyd can go to UCLA. And you know if he's at UCLA, scouts are going to look at him. Um, and by the way, just based off, I, I just want to add uh, his smile. Uh, add that smile to him at UCLA. I think that's like a perfect fit. Yeah, uh, it's it's he's got a Hollywood smile, even though he doesn't have the even though he doesn't carry himself as a Hollywood uh, type player. He's got the smile down. So he does. He does. <laughs> and he's repping the merch already. Yeah. It's awesome to see. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and, and if you think about the Chip Kelly offense, I see a great match there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think he could come in, fit in and with his athleticism and continuing to grow and learn. Um, I definitely think that he can succeed um, if, you know, because he's got his mindset to it. Yeah, they definitely do have a dual threat offense set up right there with their past quarterbacks um, who are now in the NFL. Yeah. All right. right. Let's see who or what the next clip is. <laughs> so one thing that I need to grow in is just uh, continuously doing the little things. That's that's one thing. It's just taking what the defense gives me 100% of the time and not always trying to force everything. I have kind of a big arm, and sometimes I want to show that off, but it's not always about that. It's about the, the dink and dumps and how we can pick the defense apart five yards, five yards, two yards, three yards. And then that's when I get the deep ball. So that's one thing that I just have to work on more is just, just letting the game come to me and not always trying to make the big play. It's not always going to be a big play. So. That's just one thing that I gotta work on more. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty, you know, responsible. He doesn't want to make those big fabulous plays, you know, chunk the ball down the down the uh, field and you know make that big touchdown. He wants to learn the defense before he can, you know, dismantle the defense. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting when I listen to that clip. I think of patience, um, and I think that's a difficult thing for any quarterback. Uh, because you do kind of want those chunk plays. You do want those plays that get the crowd into it, that get your teammates going, and, you know, the whole vibe of the stadium just comes to life. But I think there's kind of what he was talking about, those details. I think that's recognizing that just taking what the defense gives you um, and not always trying to make the splash play, um, that's part of being a quarterback, and that's part of maturing and learning. Um, so... I think he's definitely on to something there. And if you look at even NFL quarterbacks, think about a quarterback with a big arm. Think of like a Josh Allen. When teams 
play the Buffalo Bills, a lot of times what you want to do is force Josh Josh Allen to make make the simple plays to you know um, check down to the running backs, um, you know focus on maybe five yards, six yards, um, because they don't want those explosive plays to like Stephon Diggs or Gabe Gabe Davis. Um, I kind of was thinking of that with when Emory Floyd was talking about uh, checkdowns, um, and that's hard to do. So um, as long as he can stay patient, and then eventually, you know, the defense has to adjust. So once they adjust, that's when you can really show off yep. the big arm. Yeah, I a lot of things that I see in NFL games specifically, and like people dissecting games after, is that they get frustrated with all the checkdowns but they some people don't understand that that's what you have to do to see to read the defense see what they're doing see how many safeties are dropping back see how many corners are dropping back and linebackers pushing up everyone's moving around okay but you need to you need those checkdowns to see what they're going to do on this play what they're going to do on this play and then like you said switch it up and you know you can make some big plays every once in a while absolutely once the defense has to change and, and change their formation um, you can really exploit them. And and for me, that's like the the puppet master of like a quarterback is pulling those strings, right? Even though they're sitting back, you can force them to change by being patient, moving the ball methodically, um, and then going for the big plays. So, um, yeah, definitely. it's Being a quarterback is very intellectual. It's a very intellectual um, position to play because you have to be athletic, but you also have to be smart. You got to see the people. You got to see what they're doing throughout the entire game. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get to this next clip. So I'm a college assistant at the Basic Needs Center, and I just help uh, students just get acclimated with um, housing situations if they need housing, or uh, CalFresh if they need some EBT to get some groceries, and ultimately uh, just uh, give them a bank buck if they just need a meal right now, and. They're hungry, so we do a lot of different things at the bank, and uh, I just really enjoy helping students and fellow Cougars as myself. So that's really cool, man. Yes, you, sir. You, you give like a real service to people. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Do you find that kind of rewarding and fulfilling? I do. I do. Um, you know, like I, I said, like we're all a family here at COC, so each opportunity that I can get to help uh, my fellow Cougar, my fellow classmate, I try to jump on that as quick as possible. So. So something that stood out to me, whenever you asked, do you find that rewarding and fulfilling? Like, he got all, you could see, he, he got set up a little bit more, he smiled, and, you know, it. he seems genuine. Like, he seems like an actual really good dude who is looking out for the little guy and, like, wants to make sure everyone's okay. He's spreading positivity everywhere uh, by working at the the food bank. Uh, yeah, so what, what were your thoughts about that? Yeah, you can kind of hear my, my question in there asking if it's rewarding and fulfilling. And you're right, you can just read his body language and, and he perks up a bit and he's excited. Um, and I think that's kind of what I what I think of like Emory Floyd. He just seems really genuine and authentic. Um, he's humble. He's just, he, he wants to succeed and he wants to help others succeed. Um, and the fact that he's working at the Basic Needs Center, um, I mean, I just think that's that's fantastic, right? You Maybe you don't associate, hey, starting quarterback, College of the Canyons. Wait, he's also doing what on the side? Basic needs. Hmm. Um, so I think that shows, um, like, his maturity, um, that he kind of thinks outside the box, and he's willing to do things that um, maybe uh, that aren't necessarily traditional. And um, I think that really... That really shows like he he's he's well rounded. Yeah, it definitely shows great character by what he's doing off the field. Um, you know, as long as like like you said, it's just it's great. And he said that he he loves he loves doing it, which is also great for scouts to see. Um, it shows that he's not okay. I'm all about football, football, football. He's also taking care of his classmates and people that go to his school, which that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's look, he's he's helping others. And when we talk about like getting behind people to root for now, you know, maybe you can see why I, I'm kind of pulling for Emory Floyd. Um, he's just easy to root for. Um, he's a great story. And um, I yeah, just I'm really kind of just blown away by his maturity. Um, let's see. Let's see what we got next. 
Um, I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, COC has been nothing but show love to me uh, from from the basic needs center, from the from the coaching staff, from just the, the professors on campus, and just everybody. Uh, COC is ultimately just a wonderful place. And uh, I would also like to say like thank you to my family. Uh, I didn't I wouldn't be here without them right now. So my family has just been tremendous from uh, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, and uh, ultimately. Uh, give all the thanks and all the glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, I wouldn't be anything. So that's just what I would like to end it off on. All right, so that was our last clip. I, you know, like we said earlier, like when he, he's a genuine guy. He's a really genuine guy who's been humbled by his, by sitting out a year and being a sponge and soaking everything up. When I hear Emory Floyd, I think of, you know, like an all-around great guy. A uh, great football player, and you know someone who I'm always rooting for now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I was just gonna ask you because I I know you you hadn't you haven't uh, listened to these clips or to the interview. Um, so I mean, you walked into this um, not really knowing Emory Floyd, but now that you've heard these interviews, like what do you what is a takeaway that um, maybe you didn't know at first? I mean. He's a he's a stand up guy. He's a genuine guy who is always looking out for the little guy. Like I said earlier, and moving all the way across the country to chase his dreams that's that's very commendable. I mean, he knows what he wants and he's gonna go get that. And you know, I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, I agree. And and before I sat down and and spoke with Emily Floyd, um, I wasn't you know I wasn't entirely sure. Um, kind of like what his response, right? You never know what sort of responses you're going to get, but um, I just come away um, blown away by his maturity and um, kind of his, um, how he views life. And he just, I kind of mentioned this earlier, he really does have like the bigger picture in mind. And I think about that red shirt year where um, it kind of sounds like maybe at, at first, you know, he, he mentions to me, you know, at first he wasn't really sure about it, but he just kind of trusted the process and he believed that he was going to be better for it. And I think that's, for me, I think that's really cool. Um, and I think that's great insight into who he is. Um, even though he can't, he couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, he still believed in the coaching staff. He still believed in himself. Um, and, and I think he understands that as long as he's willing to work hard, he'll he'll get to where he's trying to go. And um, I was just now that you know we've kind of heard all the clips. I hope you guys enjoyed um, what Emery had to say. Um, I'm glad that you know I got to share a little bit about who Emery Floyd is. I had a blast with with the interview. Um, I was on just genuinely um, thrilled and happy to have. Uh, gotten a chance to talk to him and know him a little bit better. Um, so one of, the, and, and so what's interesting actually this week is homecoming for College of the Canyons football. And who do they play? They actually play Antelope Valley Community College where it also kind of started for Emory Floyd. So it kind of comes full circle yeah. for him uh, this Saturday. So if you guys have a chance to go and watch this fantastic uh, player and, and this team, uh, this is a good weekend because it's homecoming and he's going to be going up against his old team. And I think that's, that's a fantastic matchup. It is. It definitely is. It's like you said, comes full circle. You know, he has, he had that year. He's a better player than what he was back then. He's had that full year to get all that information. Now he's able to, you know, show possible scouts who are at that game, what he can do and what he can do for them, which I think is cool. So that's going to do it for this podcast. Again, we want to thank you, the audience, for listening. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed this interview. Um, you know, we had, we, had, we had a great time from start to finish. Um, so please give this a listen. If you do make it out to homecoming, I, th I think you'll be happy with what you see on the field. Yeah, and if you do make it out to homecoming, you have a little background information on our quarterback. So, like... Sam said, thank you guys for listening, and uh, this has been the Cougar News Podcast.